The Holy Gospel according to the Gospel of St. Matthew, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising and have come pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and Jerusalem. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. And then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had been seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. And then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. And now grace be to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I was in college, I was a seeker. I was seeking for direction. I was seeking for answers. What would be my vocation? What would be my profession? Would it be in the College of Agriculture? For all I had lived, after all I'd lived and worked in an orange grove here in Florida. Perhaps I can pursue a career in agriculture in the citrus industry. Or would my future be in the field of medicine? So I took appropriate courses like botany and chemistry and algebra. Well, the students in my botany class, they were all farmers, and I didn't like that and chemistry did not like me. <laughs> so I kept seeking. I kept struggling. Until one night, I had an epiphany. I had a revelation. Amongst pastors, we call it that I had a call. It was a call to become a pastor. And that epiphany, that revelation, and that manifestation has never left me. There's a reason why this day of epiphany is celebrated in the church right after Christmas, before Lent, before Holy Week, before Easter and Pentecost. 
It has to do with helping us to understand more fully what the birth of Jesus in the manger is all about. On the day after Christmas, the 26th of December, we observe the martyrdom of Stephen, the deacon. And two days later, on the 28th of December, we observe in the church the death of the holy innocents. These young children were all killed by King Herod. And so from the joy of Christmas, we are reminded that sacrifice and suffering <coughs> are also involved for the followers of Jesus, the Christmas babe. That to me is a great epiphany by the people who first developed the church year calendar. Every year we are quickly reminded that the Messiah, born in Bethlehem, <clears throat> will undergo suffering and die on a cross before his glorious resurrection. And then there's the story of the wise men, the magi, the astrologers, the seekers. They represent all of us who are seeking peace, who are seeking healing, who are seeking a new day. And they had their epiphany when the star stopped moving and the star directed them to the young Jesus in his home with his parents. And they came away from that visit realizing they had been in the special presence of the longed for Messiah, Jesus, the Savior, the King of Kings. That was their epiphany. They found what they were seeking. And they were moved to give gifts, myrrh and frankincense, these sweet smelling resins, burial spices, foreshadowing that Jesus would die. And then Paul, St. Paul, if you know him from his letters and from the book of Acts, is another example of epiphany. He persecuted the followers of the way, the disciples of Jesus, until he also was granted an epiphany, a revelation, a manifestation. This Jesus, whose disciples he persecuted, he came to believe that he is the long-promised Messiah, the Savior, not only to his compatriots, to his Jewish neighbors, but to all people, to all nations. And now it comes, the epiphany comes <coughs> to congregations, wherever they are located in our whole world. Each congregation is made up of seekers who have experienced their own epiphany. Or perhaps they're working on an epiphany. People keep seeking what this sweet Jesus birth story has to do with our Christian faith. The bright star of the message of the Messiah is displayed and over each congregation, 
including this one, the Lutheran Church of the Cross. And we keep seeking, we keep struggling to really understand and to really comprehend what discipleship is all about. What is the connection with the birth of Christ and the life of Christ and his suffering and his death and his rising to life? Again and again we are having our own epiphanies, our own insights, our own revelations as we hear God's Word, as we study the Scriptures together or perhaps alone, as we consume the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. And those epiphanies in our own lives move us to give gifts as we respond to those in our world in our community who are suffering, who are hungry, who are in any need. Lutheran Church at the Cross has a web page, has a long list of gift giving, of faithful response. Meals on Wheels, Handy Helpers, the Angel Tree, Blood Mobile, Pack a Snack for Kids, Lutheran Services in Florida, Hope Lutheran Food Basket, Making Quilts, Sponsoring the Day School. As a congregation, <coughs> we try to be welcoming. We welcome the stranger, the newcomer, the seeker. And the light of Christ, <clears throat> the star, is part of this congregation. And we are energized and we are nourished by prayer and by Bible study, by worship, by being a vibrant community. And our seeking has been rewarded. We continue to have our own epiphanies about Jesus, about the Messiah, the Healer, the Savior, the Lord. And those in our community around us here in Shore Acres in St. Petersburg who are seekers as the Magi were, as St. Paul was, and as I was in college, these seekers will seek us out. They will see the light of the star resting on our congregation. We who have had our own epiphanies, our moments of insight, of manifestation, of revelation, we will then rejoice with those seekers who come to our fellowship, experience then their own epiphanies and will not be able to stop embracing the Christian faith and join us in the Lord's community of serving, of reaching out, of welcoming, of being hospitable. And so today's worship service is a time of encouragement that the bright star of the good news of the Savior Jesus, the Christ, will continue to rest upon the life of the Lutheran Church of the Cross. That epiphanies will continue to happen in all of us. Yes, that Christmas child understands our grief, our suffering, our messes. Yes, this babe of Bethlehem 
did go to the cross and won life, eternal life, for all who would believe. And so we are all grateful for new insights and for new revelations about Jesus the Christ. We are grateful for new epiphanies, for they help us to respond in love and in service and to all who are in great need. Like the Magi, seekers will come. For the, shah, for the star shines brightly over our house, over our lives here at LCC. And so God, our Heavenly Father, grant you energy, grant you joy, grant you peace, and grant you patience. And many epiphanies for the sake of others, for the sake of the seekers in our day and in our time. Amen. And now we rise for singing the next hymn.